What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to style the profile page for our blog with Django and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to look at styling this profile page that we did in the last video. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership that's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so in the last video we created our profile page, and this is one ugly looking page, right? So we've styled a lot of the form pages in our blog already, and this one is very similar, but there's a couple of tweaks that they are slightly different than the other ones we've done, so I figured I'd make a video about it. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So let's head over to our code, and let's head to our members directory. This is the directory where we have all of our, you know, authentication, our user stuff. And let's head down to our forms.py file. And now we already have one form that we've created here, the sign up form. This is the form that people use when they wanna sign up as a blogger on our blog, right? So what we can do is just copy this whole thing. And we actually don't need this little bit right here, but we do need this class meta section. So let's just copy all this, come down here and paste it in. And let's call this, what do we wanna call this? Let's call it edit profile form. And we're not gonna use the user creation form. Uh, that's the model we use to you know sign up. Instead, we wanna use user change form. And if we look at our views.py file, that's this user change form that we used in the last video right here to create our profile page, right? The user change user form, edit user form, right? So we're just going to use that. Uh, we're going to import that or inherit from that, right? So now, just like before with this guy up here, we need to define the fields that we want to bootstrapify right here with our form control from Bootstrap, right? So where do we get these, these names? Well, we can head back over to our website and just come to our edit profile page, you know, make sure you're logged in and just right click and view the page source. And you can just kind of scroll down until you find the form, right? So form method post, that means this is a form. Uh, all of these things are form things, right? So, and then just come through here and look and see what they're named. So you can see it doesn't show the actual thing uh, for the most part, but it does show the labels for them. And the labels are gonna be the same as the form fields themselves, except for the labels have this ID underscore in front of it. So we could just strip out that and just grab these words right here after the ID underscore, and those are gonna be our field names that Django is gonna be using. So we have the password field, obviously, we have the last login is super user. We have groups. We have user permissions. Down here, we have username, first name, last name, and email. We have is staff, is active, and date joined. So if we look at this, this corresponds to last login, groups, super user status. That one that was is super user. That's this little checkbox right here. And then obviously, username, first name, last name, email address. And then here's the staff status checkbox active checkbox, and date joined, right? So you have to ask yourself now, which of all of these fields do we want to show up in our nice new styled profile page, right? And you probably don't want all of these. You, you might not want to be able to change last login, right? So you might leave that off. This user permissions thing is kind of useless and confusing. I would probably leave that off, right? You definitely want the username. You want to be able to update your first name, last name, and email address. And then you might not want this staff status or this active. This might be something you want sort of an admin person to be able to do, but not a regular user to be able to do, right? So you might leave those off. Now, uh, we're gonna, I'll show you how to add all of them and then we'll start to pair off the ones we don't want after that. So like I said, come through here, make a list of all of these. So we have password, last login, is super user, groups, help text, permissions, and uh, down here, username, first name, last name, email, and is staff, is active, and date join. So make a list of those, and then head back over to our code, and we've already got some of them just from copying and pasting this guy. So the email, first name, and last name, those are already there, 
right? So we can just now copy one of these and paste in a bunch of them for all those other fields. Now I've already done this, so let me just paste these in so you don't have to watch me do all of these things. So we have username, last name, or last login, is super user, is staff, is active, and date joint. Now these are car fields here, but when we bootstrapify them, we usually give them this form control. That's the, that's the thing, that's the class that makes them nice and bootstrapified, right? But some of these things, we don't want form control. We want form check. And for the widget type, most of the time we want text input, but uh, text input, which is just the input box, right? The regular form field. But sometimes we want checkbox input because, check this out again, because some of these are checkboxes, right? So the ones that are checkboxes, instead of giving them a forms.text input, we want to give them a forms.checkbox input. And you'll notice that the C in checkbox is capitalized and the I in input is capitalized. And then also for the adders for those, instead of giving them form controls, we're gonna give them form dash check, right? So, okay, fairly simple, basically the same as this, right? We're just adding these fields. And then we also need to come down here and tell which fields we want. And we've already got username, first name, last name, email, password one and password two. We're no longer dealing with password one and password two, so we're just dealing with passwords. We can get rid of that one and then just come through here and put all the other ones that you want on there. So let's see, we have last login. So let's put that guy there. Bear with me here. And then is super user. So let's put that guy there. And be sure to put these in quotation marks separated by a comma. So that was is super is super user. Next we have is staff, put this guy there. A lot of these are check boxes, so I'm putting them at the end. And then is active. And then finally, date joined. Okay, I left off that groups one which is this thing right here because it's just kind of stupid and I just don't want to deal with it. So, okay, okay, so we've got all these there. Now, we've created this new form, right? This edit profile form. Now we need to tell the view to use this. So let's go ahead and copy this and head over to our views.py file in our members directory, right? And then here, here's the page that deals with, or here's the class that deals with our edit profile page, right? And we've, just, we've defined it as having a form class of user change form, but we don't want to use that form anymore. That's the default form that comes with the authentication that we did in the last video. Now we just want to use edit profile form. And we need to actually import this in order to use it. So come up here to from forms, and we need to just slap that on there. Go ahead and save this, and this should work. And so that looks good. Now let's head back over to our forms.py file. Let's look at this. We're, ah, we got to add this. We've got to import this as well. So let's head up here to our, where we've, we imported user creation form from this class. We also need to import now user change form, which is this guy down here, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and save this, head back over to the website, hit reload, and boom, now we have a nice bootstrapified form. So we have our username, first name, last name, email address. This password deal is still all kinds of uh, weird. Right, and if we click this link, this still doesn't work. We'll we'll do that probably in the next video. Change the password. So you may want to remove the password field. If you wanted to remove the password field, you could just come back to your code and come down here and find password and just take it out, just like that. Save this. Head back. Hit reload. Boom. Now it's gone. Right. And I should also mention the order. Let's put this back. Uh, the order of these right here is the order that they'll show up on the page. So username, first name, last name are all first, second, third. So back on our web page, username, first name, and last name, first, second, third. So they show up in the order that you put them in that little field down there. So, all right, we've got super user, is staff, is active, date joined. This is still the password thing showing up. Now that's here. So, okay, maybe, like I said, maybe you want to get rid of date joined. If you do, 
Well, we don't need that anymore. If you do, you would just come down here, find it in our fields, and just erase it, right? I don't want to do that. I'll just leave them all for now so that you could see them. But uh, that's how you would get rid of the ones you don't want to keep if there are some that you don't want to keep, right? So uh, pretty simple to bootstrapify this. Basically the same process we've used with other forms, just slightly different because we're importing user change form instead of user creation form. And uh, these checkboxes are a little different. I don't think we've dealt with checkboxes yet. So good to see how to do that. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps the channel out and I really appreciate it. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.